suppressing the three-dimensional view of our world down to two dimensions has been a practice of ours for thousands of years, particularly when it comes to maps. This is the view of the Earth as a globe, and the most we can see of it at any one time is about half. The center area is a pretty good representation of the surface of the planet, but the surrounding areas become more distorted as you get closer to the edge. This is the Mulveda projection of the Earth which originally appeared in 1805 and is a remarkable example of quashing a three-dimensional sphere surface down to two dimensions. The significance is that it's impossible for us to ever see the planet looking like this. You must be positioned outside of our three-dimensional space to get this view, and yet most of us don't even think about that, but can still grasp instantly that this is just a view of the entire surface of the Earth. This is an image of the cosmic microwave background accidentally discovered in 1965, and it's using the same Mulveda projection. What's being shown here are traces of the radiation left over in the universe after the Big Bang. The spherical surface that's being projected is not just a tiny planet like Earth, but it's the entire observable universe. It's as if you were floating out in space and everything you could see, left, right, up, down, in front, and behind you, was quashed into the image you now see on your screen. The significance here is that you're looking at the entirety of three-dimensional space, and you're not in it. This is quite an achievement that for a few decades now, we've regularly been able to imagine ourselves outside of our three-dimensional space, and yet most of us might argue whether or not the idea is even possible, let alone be our potential reality. This example from episode 21 of using the W-axis as our axis of observation shows how we can imagine ourselves being located outside of our three-dimensional space. The X, Y, and Z axes have all been accounted for, and our point of view anywhere along the negative numbers of the W-axis is outside of three-dimensional space. This is the cat of view. If you could return to floating in space, looking left, right, up, down, in front, and behind, you would be right back inside three-dimensional space, and this would be the Anna view. As strange as it sounds, what's been shown is that it's not enough for us to observe a traditional object using squares from a single view and truly know what we're looking at in terms of dimensions. When looking at a point, is it truly a point or is it the end of a line segment? When looking at a line segment, is it truly a line segment or is it the edge of a plane? And when looking at a square, is it truly a square or is it actually the face of a cube? This same phenomenon occurs with dimensional objects using spheres, although one dimension later. For example, a line segment is indistinguishable from the edge of a disk, and with enough distance, a disk is indistinguishable from a sphere. Adding insult to injury, we also can't distinguish a line segment from an angle or an arc when viewing them from their edge. The three line segments on your screen all appear to be equal, but each one is a different shape with a different length. What's happening is that the line segment on the left is one-dimensional, meaning that it's contained within the x-axis and will appear to reduce down to a point when rotated 90 degrees. The other two apparent line segments are two-dimensional, meaning that they're contained within the xy plane, but because we're peering down the y-axis with our axis of observation, they both look one-dimensional. The problem continues when we move up a dimension. Without the lighting effects giving us clues, all three of these shapes will look like disks, but only the one on the left is actually a disk and therefore two-dimensional. The other two shapes are a cone and a hemisphere and are therefore three-dimensional. They only appear as a disk because we're looking straight down on them and our axis of observation is perfectly aligned with the z-axis, therefore reducing our view down one dimension. These shapes may all appear to be equal, but each one of them has a completely different surface area. As it is, we've come a long way by quashing our three-dimensional world down to a two-dimensional view and inferring depth, but that appears to be hurting us now and stunting our potential to gain more understanding of the world around us. It's a very difficult step to go from Euclid's vision of seeing our world as a three-dimensional volume experience to seeing our world as a three-dimensional surface experience. Even though they both look the same, the radical implication is that if true, a surface existence has a radius exponent of one dimension less than the volume exponent, which means that we're actually living in a four-dimensional world. I'm no fan of anything being referred to as four-dimensional and use the word sparingly because of the wildly misunderstood connotations associated with the term, and prefer that the descriptive words extra or additional dimension be used instead. As an example, most people will associate the fourth dimension as being above the third dimension in some way, a larger or greater fourth dimensional space that completely encompasses the entirety of our smaller and lesser 
third dimensional space. When it comes to dimensionology then, that would be an egregious error in application. The extra or additional dimension we're referring to when using the W axis is not from above looking down or from the outside looking in, but would more accurately be described as from the inside looking out. It would best be thought of as dimension zero and not dimension four. A good example of this is the azimuthal equidistant projection which was used by the ancient Egyptians according to Wikipedia. Most people are unaware that the same projection is incorporated into the symbol for the United Nations. At the center of the projection is the North Pole, which appears as a point somewhere in the Arctic Ocean. To understand this projection a little better is to imagine that you're looking down a tunnel, which is actually the inside of a line. That line extends from the farthest point, the North Pole, to the closest point, the South Pole, and the outer white ring is the continent of Antarctica. The edge of the projection then is the closest point to you and it's been stretched out to appear as a circle from this perspective. This is the opposite view, looking at a point in Antarctica at the center of the projection which is now the farthest point from you, and that single point in the Arctic Ocean which was the farthest point from you is now the closest point, and it's been stretched out to appear as a thin blue ring around the perimeter of the projection. All four of these projections are from the cata side, the outside of our three-dimensional space, according to dimensionology. There is nowhere in three dimensional space that you could go to be able to see any of these projections with the naked eye. We mentioned in episode 20 about the phenomenon of images appearing to flatten. But another more common phenomenon is the observation that objects appear to get smaller as they move farther away from us and larger as the object moves closer, although the object never changes size. This observation is strictly from the anaside, the inside of three-dimensional space. It's a little unnerving, but the exact opposite occurs when viewing from the cataside. Objects that are moving away from us appear to get larger, and those that are moving towards us appear to get smaller. From the side view then, using the XY graph, we can see that the object appears to be expanding as it moves to the right and contracting as it moves to the left. This is not so. The object is not changing size, but is traveling along the W axis. It's very hard to imagine then that the object is not getting closer to us as it appears to expand. That observation would be consistent with our default view, the Anna view, but it is not the case here. More on viewing our world as a three-dimensional surface experience versus a three-dimensional volume experience in our next episode. This is Jeff Zabo for Dimensionology. Up next, Dimensional View and the Celestial Sphere.